Good morning, good afternoon, and happy Friday, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our next installment of our Softree webinar series. Today's topic is an introduction to low volume road design using RoadEng. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing today's topic, um, which really is, is about um, covering different types of roads uh, in a more generalized context. So whether it's a oil and gas access road, a rural county road, or even a forestry road, um, the principles and concepts that are, you know, Jack's gonna cover today um, are pretty much uh, applicable to all. So my name is Erin, I'm the Business Development Manager over here at Softry, and with me today is Jack Rymack. He's one of our applications engineers and one of Softry's undisputed low volume road design experts. Um, he is going to be walking us through, uh, from start to finish, um, a quick road design. But before we get started in, in that, uh, let me just go through a couple of housekeeping items. So first of all, you are all muted. Um, that is intentional. Um, we're encouraging you, though, however, to ask questions and engage with us throughout this presentation using the Q&A section of your GoToWebinar panel. And of course, if you missed something or want to share this with a colleague, the webinar is being recorded, um, and it's going to be available on our YouTube page, and we usually follow up our webinars with a quick e-blast, just giving you access uh, to the session. So a little bit about us, for those of you who are new to Softry and for our returning users who are coming back to see some tips and tricks, um, just to humor me for a moment. Um, we are a civil software company based out of Vancouver, BC. And yes, it is actually probably looking pretty much like that photo here today, a beautiful sunshine. Hopefully it is wherever you are as well. Um, we've been in the business for quite a few years, have a variety of clients across, across the globe. And really at the core of our company is a very consumer-centric philosophy. Uh, we're all about focusing on engineering, over drafting, keeping it easy, and really we strive to, strive to stay away from the steep learning curves that exist in this industry. And RoadEng, the program that Jack is going to be doing his demonstration in today, really is, uh, is a byproduct of that philosophy. Um, oh, there's a little arrow saying, hey, we're here. Um, so what are we covering today in our introduction to low volume road design? Jack is gonna be showing you a greenfield construction of a two lane rural gravel road based on LiDAR data. He is gonna be importing two squares of data in LAS format. Then he's gonna be quickly creating a terrain model, moving that through over to our location module and looking at uh, the creation of the horizontal and vertical alignments. He's gonna manually balance the earthworks, and of course, um, we have solutions to optimize and uh, automize the balancing of earthworks, and you can do that through Softree Optimal, which is a, you'll see in another webinar coming up in our calendar. And then finally, he's going to generate the output sheet. Um, I did quickly mention that uh, RoadEng is a modular program, so we are going to be looking at the two different modules today, uh, the terrain module, where he's going to bring in the LiDAR data, set up that DPM, and then move it over to our location module to complete the road design. Uh, before I pass it to Jack, of course, I'd like to put in a little uh, public service announcement some, for some of our other upcoming webinars. So up next, we've got cross-section components and the one I mentioned uh, with regards to learning how you can optimize your balancing of earthworks um, is on Friday, November the 10th. That's working with LIDAR, improving your workflow, and it's all about how we can make best use of our, of our LIDAR data, uh, as well as how we can balance our earthworks. So with that, I'm going to just quickly change the presenter here over to Jack, and he's going to take it away on low volume roads. Thanks, Aaron. Uh Thank you very much uh, for joining us today, folks. Uh, my name is Jack Rymack, as Aaron said. Thank you very much, Aaron, by the way. And uh, I'm just going to show you how to import some LiDAR data. First of all, I'm going to open up some corridors so I can thin out the LiDAR data. There's a whole bunch of corridors. I'm going to use one of these corridors as my starting point. Insert the LiDAR data, file, insert file. And as Aaron said, as Aaron mentioned, uh, they're LiDAR files, so I'm going to use LAS format. There's two tiles. Hold the shift key down or control key down to select both of them. At the same time, we can import them. I'm just going to import the ground data. There is a whole bunch of other information here, like low, ve low vegetation and a whole bunch of different 
medium vegetation, high vegetation buildings. I'm just going to focus on the ground data because that's what you need to um, calculate a uh, low volume road. All right, let me uh, go into uh, the selection tab. I'm going to add those corridors one at a time. There's three of them. And then I'm going to thin out the data based on the distance away, uh, distance within those corridors, which is going to be 100 meters. Add the next corridor. By the way, before I move on, uh, as Aaron mentioned, I will be looking over at the screen every so often just to check to see if you guys have added it, asked any questions. Let me add the last corridor. So based on the, um, the specifications that I have in here, within 100 meters of the corridor, I will not thin out any of the data, but beyond that, I will thin out. So basically, none of the data will be thinned out within the corridors. Outside of that, I will thin out every ninth point. Just press OK and continue, and it's going to import that data set. Within a few seconds, you should have both tiles imported. It's quite quick. One corridor is almost done. Yeah, it is done. We're working on the next corridor now. Sorry, next tile. We finished one tile and now we're working on the next tile. There's the data. You can see that there's a lot more data around the corridor, and outside of that 100 meter corridor, there's less data being uh, imported. If I select a blank space, all the data will disappear. It's still there, it's just uh, in the background. I don't need to have to show it. So I'm going to just create my tin. I'm Made sure in that dialog box when I import the LiDAR data that it is not displayed. Select the starting point where I want to start my design, which is at the end of this road. Generate my, generate my contours is the next step. Tin and contours include all triangles. Minor contours, major contours, minor contours will be a two meter interval. Major contours will be a 10 meter interval. Of course, for our friends in the south, our software does work with imperial units feet. So um, when I talk about metric, it's just this file is in metric. Just be aware of that. So after a few more seconds, we should have some contours. Pretty uh, hilly this terrain, so uh, just be aware of that. For those flatlanders, this is a hilly terrain. I don't have to worry about that too much. Just uh, be aware that this is a uh, mountainous. Let's save this file as. I don't want to override the existing file. I'm going to save it as corridors plus topo. Next step is to uh, go on to my location design module and start designing this road. Module 2 location design. File new is where you start. Open up the uh, corridors plus topo. 
It's going to ask me where do I want to start my alignment. I'm going to start my alignment on that train current point. If you remember, I selected a point at that end of that last road. I want to start in that current point. Get a screen layout for horizontal alignment. Screen layouts are these little files that help you um, with certain parts of your uh, design and uh, setting up your um, your screen so that you can do certain tasks. I'm not going to use this um, template. I'm going to get a set of, just going to show you what templates I am using. This is the current one that's in there right now. I'm going to use this one. It has surfacing, gravel surfacing, and has a ditch, uh, a little bit a little bit narrower ditch and steeper uh, cut and fill slopes and um, ditch in slopes. I'm not going to talk about templates too much, just wanted to show you what it looks like. Assign that template. It's going to be the resource road template. There it is. I'm going to go off into this direction, go around here, come back, and then make my way up to the top of this this area over here. Just come back and uh, around here. Right click to get your uh, added IP tool. Left click once. I'm just going to do a straight section over here. You can all you can also see if you uh, look down here my grade for this first section. This first line. This first tangent that I have is 3.1 percent. So it's not that steep yet, but it will get steeper. I'm going to add another um, intersection point all the way over here. This next segment is at 5.3%. Then we're going to go up this really steep section. Left click once. Left click again to tie it down. 6.1% grade for this next section. And then we got a really steep section, which is 19%. I'm going to try to make that a little less steep. Now we're down to 6.1% again. And then, uh, so basically, you're just chasing the contours up as you go up the um, Up the side hill. Let me just. Uh, I, I think I'm getting close to reaching my uh, my goal up here. This last segment is around 33%. I'm going to try to uh, even that out a bit more. I'm going to delete this tangent right here so that I can. 21% seems like it's a little bit better. Pull this down a little bit more so that I can. Uh, Make that a little bit less. Next step, I'm going to add some horizontal curves. Turn on to simple curves. Jump back all the way back to my second PI or IP, which is all the way back here. I'm going to add a uh, 50 meter radius curve right here. Jump forward. I'm going to use a default of 130 meters here. Jump forward. Get my default, which is 130 meters here. Jump forward. Get my default, which is another 130 meters. Then I'm at the end. Let me just pull this IP up in a little bit more to show you that you can do it. Make this um, last slope. Now we're down to about 17%, which is a little bit more reasonable for a lot of um, access roads, resource roads. Now we're off to uh, vertical alignment. Get another screen layout for vertical. You can see 
that I'm coming down first of all and then I got to go back up these colors that you see here well you see only one color right now but you'll see more as we go along red means that we're wasting that's because our template is just sitting on the middle of the uh, right on top of the ground and if you end up having your template sitting on top of the ground you'll end up having more waste than you'll have borrow just to take a look at some of the other colors here as you saw red was waste borrow is blue don't have any borrow going on yet we're going to have a little bit more free haul and overhaul as we go along overhaul is yellow free haul is green and you can set your overhaul and your free haul distance i'm just going to set my free haul distance to something a little bit higher than 100 meters set my overhaul distance to around 750 meters now we can start designing you can also see a, a mass haul and cut and fill information over here in numeric format as well as mass haul diagram down here we design from left to right in the profile left click once add an IP anywhere to the right of the first IP left click again to tie it down you can see that we're getting some green here we're starting to balance a little better going up this next slope left click once left click again to tie it down we got only a 7.4 percent grade here which is good left click once left click again to tie it down we got only a one negative 1 1.2 percent grade here left click once left click again to tie it down our next grade is 12 percent still good go across here one percent grade here go up this next section steep section we got a um, 18 percent here but I can get alleviate that problem a little bit better by pulling on this IP up here and then uh, add another PI or IP over here and just keep on going in that fashion as we get up to the top here even this last uh, segment isn't that bad it's only about 20 percent if I want to I can make that a little bit less by pulling on this IP up here balancing out my grades a little bit better let's in let's let's add in our vertical curves jump back I'm going to get rid of some of this borrow in a second jump back to my second PI or IP get a um, a 5k value for my vertical curves which is which equals a 77 meter curve length apply that good enough for access roads set that as my default jump get my default the higher your uh, design speed on your curves vertical curves you're going to uh, probably elect to uh, put in a larger K value or you can even toggle on length and type in length which will calculate back the K value I'm going to put in a 5 set that as my default apply jump get my default if you see this message right here it means that the curve that cannot fit because there's another curve or another IP in the way all I do is just move this IP away from the previous one default and then I can pull them back a little bit closer together there in that uh, one little motion I got rid of a lot of that borrow let me try to do the same thing down here jump forward until I get to that IP and get my default curve apply jump forward get my default curve apply get rid of some of this borrow here while I'm here pull down I'll leave it at that jump forward get my default curve apply jump forward get my default curve apply and that's it so 
So we're pretty well balanced except for one segment down here. Let me just uh, try to balance that a little bit more by pulling down on this IP. I uh, got rid of one problem and I've created another problem over here. I've got waste occurring over here on this end, so I'm just going to pull up a bit more. Remember, the key is when you got red, you pull up. That's waste. Pull up on your IP. If you've got blue, borrow, pull down on your IP. This is good enough for me. I'm going to go on to uh, output now. Get a screen layout. So the next step is output, and then finally I'm going to show you how to do a quick drive-through of this road. Get a screen layout for output. Change my page size to 11 by 17, because this is what this is set at. This um, plan profile sheet is set at 11 by 17. Change my distance uh, for my pagination. Let me just um, there. Okay, so now we're starting at the sort of the center of the of the page. And then if I go Control N, you can see all the pages. Let me just adjust one more thing here. Change that to minus 200 again, just to start. So you can see the, um, the full curve, control N, then you can see the rest of the curve, control N. If you want to, you can add title block information in your uh, plan profile sheet. Let me quickly show you how to do cross-section sheets before I do um, output. These cross-section sheets are set to uh, 20 meter interval. I'm going to change the interval to uh, something a little bit. Let me just turn off all of this and then set it to 100 meter interval. You can also change your layout. I'm going to change it to 2 by 2 so that things fit a little bit better on the uh, page. We got three pages of cross sections based on this layout. If you can't, if things are still not fitting, you're going to have to change it a little bit more. If you've got these slope stakes that are running up and down the slope, you're going to have to change your layout again so that you can fit things a little bit better. Okay, that's all I wanted to say about output. Let me. Uh, show you how to create a, uh, a drive-through so you can drive through this road. I'll change it to a screen layout with a section window, file, save as, terrain file. I'm going to save it as designed save it as this one that I had before. Overwrite that one. And then put in some codes, uh, template codes. Um, remove all of those. I'm going to add in a uh, my ditches. Ditch inside left, ditch inside right, ditch outside left, ditch outside right. Road edge, and I'm just holding my control key down so I can select them all at once. Slope stake left, slope stake right. The top of the uh, surfacing, which is ST1 left, ST1 right. And then just select all of these from top to bottom. Make sure that they're brake lines. And then just press OK. Everything else can stay the default in the... Uh, dialog box. Let me uh, open up that. I'm not going to merge it in because the drive-through would be pretty slow because it's a pretty large LiDAR file. Let me just open up the uh, the 
the road by itself, and then I'll do a drive through for you. Select the center line, generate triangles, probably around 200 meter length. We actually don't need contours, but I'm, I'm going to turn them off. Don't need the contours there. Just as long as I have triangles, let me generate that. Yeah, that's good enough. Let me just increase the uh, width of my triangles for just for the length of my triangles. Sorry, and uh, window, new window, graphics, 3D. Right click. Drive through flyby. Play. Increase the speed. Let me just decrease that a little bit more so that it's whipping along too fast. Let me reverse it and I'm going to lower the speed and play again. There, that's a little bit more reasonable. Yes, I can increase it one more notch and just make it a little bit faster. There, we're going around that switch back. Well, that's basically all I wanted to show you today, folks. It was pretty easy design. It's not. Uh, rocket science to use our software so um, thank you very much for joining us today and we'll see you next in a couple of weeks for another one of our presentations different topic thank you great Bye -bye. thanks Jack and, and if anyone has any questions I uh, will just watch that question pane here for a moment yeah. and if not um, go enjoy the rest of your Friday I know some of you are probably a little bit uh, further away than uh, you're probably out in the uh, Midwest. Probably getting close to quitting time for you guys there on a Friday especially. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.